become bold in sharing Jesus, that your faith would go from being something that's internal to being external. That is our goal for this year. That's what we're going to be focusing on. So today, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be going into a series called The Secret Place. The Secret Place. Anybody ever read the book, The Secret Garden? It's not about that. All right. But uh, <laughs> could be, but that's what that made me think of. But as soon as I said, I thought of The Secret Garden. All right. Do you know that oftentimes there are lies that we believe that seem like they would be true, but then one day you find out they're not, and you're like, my whole life, I've been, okay, like some of you guys, like your older siblings told you were adopted, just found out you weren't, like, you're like, this whole time, thought I was adopted, thought that answered all my questions, found out that's really my parents, okay? Um, what about this one? How many of you know that your blood in your veins is blue while it's in your veins, and then when the, it does, it's not true. It's red all the time. I know, disappointing, isn't it? Disappointing. You thought it was like one of those spoons out of the tricks boxes, and you put it in the milk and it changes colors? Nope. How about this one? Did you know that chameleons do not change color to match their surroundings? They don't. They change based off of, like, emotion and mood and things like that, but they don't just, like, bloop, change. to match. It doesn't, they don't work like that. Isn't that disappointing? How about this one? How many of you were told by your parents when you were little, don't swallow your gum? Why not? Why not? It'll be in your stomach for seven years. That's not true. You can eat it like cereal. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You can't, it can't actually block you if you eat a lot at one time. But it actually just disintegrates in your stomach in a very short amount of time. Not true, mom and dad. <laughs> How about this one? Sugar makes kids hyper. It's not true. It's not true. Isn't that disappointing? Okay, now here's the one that really got me. I was very disappointed about this. I used to believe, and people told me, that if you went to the Empire State Building and dropped a penny from the top of it, that it would kill somebody if it hit them. But it won't. It, I was like, if I was like, if I ever go to New York, I'm wearing a helmet, I'm walking around the Empire State Building, nobody's dropping pennies on me, we're in a coin shortage anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, I was like, I was ready for it. Not true. Extremely disappointing that the way I thought things were, are not the way they are. So we're going to jump into a little story here where Jesus is talking to the people and he wants to explain to them that the way they thought things were isn't actually the way things are. There used to be these people, they were called the Pharisees. Say Pharisees. Interesting thing is their name starts with a PH and not an F. They were called the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were the religious scholars. They were the people that would read the Bible and they would pick it apart and know every little thing about it. They would memorize the first five books of the Bible. Okay? Memorized. So much so that they could tell somebody, okay, in the book of Deuteronomy, what's the 32nd letter on the 15th line of the 5th page? And they'd be like, T. That, that's the way they knew it. And the way that they thought about was that the more spiritual they appeared to people, the more spiritual they were. And the people would look at them and be like, they're so spiritual. Wow. So they would do things like they would walk into church. And they'd be like, hey, guys, it's time to give the offering. And we have these offering boxes in the back you just kind of give on your way out. You know, nobody needs to know. But they would walk in, and they'd be like, hey, it's offering time, and we want to give to God. And they'd be like, pastor, I got some money to give. <laughs> and they just start, yep, yep, those aren't ones, y'all. Those are hundreds. Uh-huh, uh-huh, all for the glory of God. And people are like, oh, my goodness. You see how much they just gave to God? That's incredible. And they'd be like, yes, it is. Or they would fast. How many of you guys know what fasting is? 
Fasting is when you give up food so that you can go after God, pursue God more. But when they would fast, they would go, they grab some dirt, put it on their face, rip their clothes a little bit, and they'd be like, ah, ah, and they'd be like, what's the matter? They're like, I'm so hungry. And they'd be like, man, here's some food. Here's some cornflakes. Like, what even now? I can't. I'm fasting. I'm fasting. And people would be like, oh, my goodness. These people, they're so spiritual. They would go into the middle of the town, find a place to stand on, and they'd be like, it's time to pray. Dear omnipotent, omnipresent, great majestic God, I thank thee that thou hast blessed me with incredible good lookingness, like that of a wild stallion. God, omnipotent, omnipotent one, I thank thee that thou hast given me the biceps of a silverback gorilla. God, I thank thee. And they would just as loud as they could, as much as they could, and people would just be like, whoa, these guys, incredible. And so this is the way that people were used to thinking that you should relate to God, and they would feel like, I can't measure up to that. I don't know what omnipotent means. And they would just be like, man, these guys. And so Jesus shows up, and he begins to teach them some things that are different than what they thought. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, Jesus says this. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. Now, here's the interesting thing about this is that Jesus knew the Pharisees were listening to him because they were always waiting to see when Jesus would mess up and say something wrong just like hypocrites do. <laughs> and so they was like, he was like, don't be like the hypocrites. And he's like, I'm not going to point any fingers. Don't be like those guys. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. He said, assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Do you know what their reward was? Their reward was people coming up and going, wow, you're so spiritual. Oh. You're incredible. And God was like, there you go. That's what you get. High five. That's it. Now, how many of you have ever had somebody compliment you about something and it just wasn't enough? Let, let me explain to you, right? Let's just say that you, um, you just did something really great. Whatever it is for you, the thing that you really like, and you were great at it, right? And, or, or maybe you posted a picture of yourself, or maybe you, 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 you won something, or you did something, or you, whatever it may be, right? And then somebody came up and said, hey, that was really great. That was a great job. That was a great picture. That was nice. And you're like, thank you. But as soon as you said thank you, you wanted more. You wanted somebody to say some more. And so you went and found somebody else. And you're like, hey, did you see this? Hey, did you know that I did this? Hey, did you know that I had? And they're like, hey, good job. And you're like, thank you, but it's still not quite enough. And so then you go to somebody, maybe the same person that already said good job. And you're like, hey, are you sure that it was good? Like, are you sure I did okay? So they'll say it again. They're like, no, it was great. It was awesome. You're like, ah, oh, I just don't, I feel kind of weird about it. And they're just like, no, it's fine, okay? I meant it when I said it. But because, you know why? Because we were never meant to be satisfied by being verified by people. That's never what was meant to satisfy us. We were made to be connected with God. For him to tell us, well done. For him to tell us, good job. You know, when Jesus showed up and he started his ministry... At 30 years old, the father spoke from heaven and he said, this is my son. I'm well pleased with him. He verified and confirmed his son. And because Jesus had the verification and his father's love, he was able to overcome when people would talk bad about him, when they didn't want to be his friend, when they betrayed him, when they backstabbed him. He was like, that hurts, but I don't need you because I got my father. It hurts, but I don't need it. 
I got, I'm okay. When the Father is the one who verifies you, you're going to be okay. You were never meant to be having people tell you who you are. You are always meant to be in an amazing, crazy, fun, committed, serious, but incredible relationship with God. That's what you were made for. And until you have that, you will always feel like something is missing. So Jesus says that. He says, they're going to get their reward. Then here's what happens. In verse 6, he says, but when you pray, go into your room. Well, where do those other people used to go? Where did it say? On the street corner, in the synagogues, out in the open. He says, no, I want you to go into your room. And when you've shut your door, shut your door. What's he saying? He said, this, it needs to be personal. This needs to be personal. This isn't about what anybody else says. Let me ask you this. When you pray, or maybe when you do something good, maybe maybe when you you, you take notes at 418, maybe when you know all the verses, maybe when you know the right answers and you want to answer them, are you doing it because you want people to tell you how great you are or are you doing it because you're just engaged and you want to know God more? And that, why am I doing what I'm doing? And Jesus says, go into your room and shut your door. You know what that means? It means it's not your mama's relationship with God, your daddy's relationship with God, your connect group leader, your pastor. This is your relationship with God. That's it. Shut your door. It's just nobody needs to know what you're doing there. Nobody needs to know what's happening. You don't need to come out and tell everybody, oh, my goodness, I was just in the presence of God. And he was just in there. Angels were coming in. And it was just inc- like no, nobody needs to know. Shut your door. And you have your time with God. And then he says this. Pray to your father who sees in the secret place. Pray to your father. Now, what's interesting is he doesn't say pray to God. And it's not because the Father isn't God. It's because Jesus is trying to let them know that where they saw God as far, he wanted to say, no, he's near. They saw God as the big, all-powerful, all-creating, incredible God. Wow. And he goes, he is, but he's close. That's exactly what he is. But he wants to be father. He wants to be father. Now, for some of you, you have a great relationship with your dad. And you're like, cool, yeah. Like, I, get, I talk to my dad and we have a good relationship. And yeah, that makes sense. But for some of you, the idea of talking to your father may seem like, ooh. That, that seems uncomfortable. The idea of talking to father may seem like, but he always expects so much and I can't ever measure up. Maybe you don't even know your dad. Maybe you never met your dad. I don't know what your, your relationship with your dad is, but for each person, when I say that God is father, it will give a different response. And I will say this, God is perfect. His love is is perfect, which means his love as father is perfect toward you. What you miss in an earthly father, God is all that and more in himself. But the reason we don't know that a lot of times is because we stay out of the secret place. We don't know what the father is like because we don't go into the secret place. Our relationship with God is basically come to 418, go to church on Sunday, go to fuel, or come here. or you, But to go into the secret place where you get to know him and talk to him and he talks to you and you know what he sounds like and talks like. And when you're struggling and you talk to him and you cry to him, his comfort comes in. And when you're having a great day and you talk to him, his love comes in and he's like, I'm with you. I've got you. You're my child. You don't know that if you don't go into the secret place. 
But if you will begin to go into the secret place, to make it a priority, you will begin to see that God is a good father. That he will heal the issues we have with our earthly fathers. That he will come in and fill those voids, those empty spots where we go, man, I wish my dad had, I wish my father, I wish we had. God's like, no, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. Can you go back to that one, Ben? He says, pray to your father who is in the secret place. I like that because it just shows this picture of him waiting. I just see this picture of God. He's not mad. He's just kind of (laughs) bored. He's like, all right, I'm just kind of waiting for you to show up. And when you do, I'm ready to talk. I'm ready to, what what do you do? I'm ready. I'm your father. I'm ready. He's just waiting. For you to show up, your father who's in the secret place. Now listen, it doesn't have to be your room. Some of you guys may share a room and you can't, it can't be your room, okay? It could be anywhere. That is just you and God. Go outside, take a walk. Go find somewhere to park. I don't know. Whatever it is, your secret place to just sit and be with God, to read his word, to let the Holy Spirit of God speak to you, the secret place. And it says, <laughs> and your father who sees in secret, secret will reward you openly. Meaning this, whew, that what you do in the secret place with God will become evident when you're around people. They're going to be like, what is it about you? Because see, you become like who you hang around. You become like who you hang around. So if you are spending time with God every day, eventually your, your, the way you respond to things will change. The way you love people will change. The way you, you deal with hurt and pain, the way you deal with stress will change. Because you become like the one that you hang around. He says, I will reward you openly. Now, that word reward means to basically give somebody something because of something they gave up or lost or because of the effort they put into it. Now, we don't go spend time with God for the reward, but the reward is what he gives us anyway. So when you're sitting there and, and, and you're like, well, I need to go to bed because I got to get up early to spend time with God, God sees that. He's like, I see that effort. I see that you sacrificed staying up late and watching this, being on TikTok for two more hours. I see that you sacrificed that so you can spend time with me. I got something for you. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't know what he's going to do. I just know that he says he will reward you. A lot of times that reward is going to be the peace that you've been looking for. A lot of times that reward is going to be that he gives you answers to questions that are going on in your life. That reward could be so many different things. But God is saying, if you come and you seek me, I will reward you. Real quick, here's some things that he does say for sure. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says this, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So he goes, I some of y'all are like, oh, I come to church and I, I don't know, I just can't feel God. Or I go home, I feel God at church, but when I go home, I don't really connect with God. He goes, no, 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 I promise you, if you seek me wholeheartedly, you will find me. A lot of times we seek God half-heartedly and wonder why he didn't show up. We're like, well, I sat here for five minutes and nothing happened. I listened to one worship song and I didn't feel anything. God's like, no, 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 no. Come into the secret place. Day after day after day. Seek me wholeheartedly and you'll find me. Jeremiah 33, 3. Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. There's another verse in the Bible that talks about God's secrets and him telling people his secrets. I love the fact that God has secrets. I love that. Do you know why? Because you only tell secrets to people that you're close to. And Jesus says if you come into the what? Secret place. (laughs) Then God is going to show you. He's going to reward you. And one of those rewards is that God shares his secrets with you. See, knowing God is not just this thing you do. 
It's not just showing up to church. It's not just reading your Bible. It's not just, it is a relationship with the king of the universe who humbled himself enough to come and say, I'll make myself real to you. I will come and be a friend to you. Even though you're just, I mean, if God were to look at you, we'd be less than a speck. We're just nothing. Literally. Like in the, in the existence of all that we are, in the existence of time as we know it, we're nothing. Our 90 years that we may live on earth is nothing. And God goes, but I want to be your friend. He loves you. And he goes, I will tell you secrets. Psalm 1611. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. He's like, there's joy in my presence. When you're with me, there's pleasure, there's delight, there's a happiness. There is something that is beyond what this world can give you when you're with me. But see, we don't experience that. And so we wonder, what is even the point of following Jesus? They get to do whatever they want, and I have to not do this because it's a sin. But they look like they're having fun, and I'm not having any fun because we're not in the sacred place. We don't have a relationship with him. We just have a duty that we do, which is coming to church and being a good person. That's not what it's about. It's the secret place. It's knowing him. It's him talking to you while you're walking through your day and telling you about who you are, him giving you your identity. God, who am I? God, I know I'm different than all these people. Who do you say that I am? He goes, oh, let me tell you a secret about you. When, whoo, God's like, when I formed you, let me tell you what I was thinking. When I put you together, let me tell you what I was planning. Let me tell you the purpose. There are secrets that God has just for you. Second Chronicles 16.9, it says, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Another version explains it this way. It says that the eyes of the Lord are looking all over the earth so that he can show himself strong for those people. God's looking around. He's like, are you loyal to me? Do you love me? Do you, do you, are you committed to me? Okay, I want to do something really cool for you. He's looking for you. Matthew 10, 27. It says, what I tell you now in the darkness... Shout abroad when the daybreak comes. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. Where does this whisper happen? In the secret place. How are you going to know how to help your friends know Jesus? How are you going to get a word from God about your friend so that they know that God is real because you know something about them that nobody would ever know. You, don't, you didn't know because they never told you they had an eating disorder. But in the secret place, God told you they had an eating disorder so you could go and minister to them in a place that they didn't even tell anybody about. You didn't know that they were struggling with their identity, but God shares it to you in the secret place. And now you can go and help them figure out who God has made them to be. Why? Because the secret place, because what he tells you in the secret, you shout from the rooftops. I want to encourage you that the secret place become your favorite place. That you would say, man, I need to wake up in the morning so that I can spend time with the Father. And I don't mean just like, all right, got 10 minutes, let me get through this. No, no, no. It may take time. Listen, if you got a 10-minute capacity, 10 minutes is what it is. And it will grow to 15 and 20 and 30. Whatever you're, just start. God wants to do something and you, that is incredible and will change your life forever. This life with Jesus is more than you can imagine. When I was 15, Ben, you can get something on. When I was 15, I was walking through school. I was walking through my school grounds, just minding my own business. And some of you may have heard this, but some of you haven't. God said to me, Josh, you're either going to follow me or you're not. 
right? I wasn't being bad. I was, I was actually a really good kid. I just wasn't doing anything for God. I wasn't really, like, actively going after God. And God goes, Josh, you're either going to follow me or you're not. Like, are you going to, what are you going to do? And I was like, oh, I guess, I'll, I guess I will. And I want to tell you this. I have never once in my entire life regretted that decision. I have seen people go off and live life their own way and look like they were having the best time. I have, I've been made fun of for the choices that I've made. And I look at their life and I see the misery. I see the, 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 the crazy chaos in their life. I see that they are smiling on the outside, but they're hurting on the inside. I'm like, why would I choose that over what I have? Pastor Leanna says this all the time, and I love it. You will never meet a person on the face of this earth that does not need Jesus. And you have them. Or maybe you don't. If you don't have Jesus, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I'm going to tell you what that means. It's basically this. You have to understand that God made you to be in a relationship with him. That's what you were created for. And our sin separates us from God. What is sin? Sin is us saying, God, I'm going to do things my way instead of your way. He, he shows us in the Bible what pleases him. He shows us in the Bible what is true and what is good and what his standard is for what is right. And we go, nah, God, I'll do it my own way. That's sin. Lying. Stealing. Manipulating, hatred, anger, bitterness, disrespecting your parents. God, I'll do it my own way. And the Bible says the payment for sin is death. And this is a spiritual death, which means that we can't be in relationship with God, which means that we can't go to heaven because there is a heaven and there actually is a hell. Hell was not made for people. Hell was made for the devil and his demons. But when people choose to partner with the devil by doing things their own way, they can't get into heaven. So Jesus says, listen, I'm going to pay your price. The payment for sin is death. All right, I'm going to send my son Jesus to pay the price for your sin. And Jesus allowed himself, God allowed himself to be killed by people on a cross because he was substituting himself for you. He said, I'll die so they don't have to. And all you have to do is say, okay, thank you for paying that price for me. But the beautiful thing is that Jesus rose from the dead. Three days later, the Spirit of God raised Jesus up in power. He didn't leave him there. He came back to life. This is a documented fact in history. This is not just religious words and jargon. This is a documented fact in history. Jesus came back to life, proving that he was God, that he was stronger than death, hell, sin, and all of your problems. And he says, listen, if you just give your life to me, I will be your Lord. I will change you. I will heal you. And I will give you a brand new life. Because he loves you. He loves me, this little speck. He loves you so much that he says, I'm inviting you into a secret place. And God is the most inclusive God you would ever want to have. He says, everyone who repents of their sin and invites Jesus to forgive them will be saved. Everyone. And that life with Jesus starts right now. And you don't have to be afraid of COVID. You don't have to be afraid of death. You don't have to be afraid because eternity is secure and heaven is our home and we will live forever with him whenever he brings us home. This is the hope of Jesus. So would you just close your eyes? If you have never 
understood this for real. Maybe you've known how to do all the stuff and raise your hands, but you've never actually understood it. And you want to actually give your life to Jesus. Allow him to forgive you of your sins, to change you. I just want you to stand up and be bold. Just stand up. Good. 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 Good, 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 good. Let me tell you why I said stand up. <laughs> because even though he invites us into a secret place, what he does in you will become public. And this is a safe place for you to be bold for Jesus. And I want you to start being bold for Jesus here so you can be bold for Jesus out there. Let me tell you this, I'm proud of every single one of you that stood up. I'm incredibly proud of you that you took a step of boldness. So everybody sit and go ahead and stand up with them because we're a family. Everybody just lift your hands up to Jesus as a way of saying, God, I surrender. Right? When somebody comes up and the cops come, they're like, hey, stop. They, they put their hands up. I surrender. God, I give you all that I am. I want you to everybody just pray this. Say, Jesus, I thank you that you love me. Even though I sin, even though I've messed up and I'm not perfect, you love me. Forgive me for doing life my way. I want to live for you. Thank you that you died on the cross for me. And you came back to life. I give you my life. I want to live for you. Now if you prayed that and you meant it, and you believe it, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God comes and lives inside of you right now. The Spirit of the living God, all-powerful God, lives inside of you. He's never going to leave you. You will never be alone again. When you're sitting in your room and you're like, man, I wish I had a friend to talk. No, there's a friend right there. And he invites you into the secret place. He invites you to know him. He invites you into adventure. He invites you to be his friend. You will never be alone again. And now you begin a relationship with him that will be the best thing that you've ever had if you seek him with all your heart. Come on, let's give God a hand for what he did tonight. Now I'm going to pray over you and we're going to go to connect groups. God, I thank you for what you did for every team. Come on, lift your hands up to him one more time. I thank you for every team that said yes to you. I thank you for every team that stood up boldly. God, I ask that they will begin to feel your pleasure, that you are proud of them, that they would feel your spirit warming them, that they would feel your comfort around them, and God, that they would begin to even sense you changing them the moment that they step out of these seats. God, you are good and you're doing a great thing. Seal it today and Jesus' name, amen.